Hello guys Bienvenue dans cette toute nouvelle vidéo. Je suis actuellement à Copenhague et euh, aujourd'hui on va essayer de décrypter un petit peu euh, quel est le style Copenhague puisque en ce moment il y a beaucoup de discussions autour de ce fameux euh, style du Copenhagen style. Donc on va aller décrypter un petit peu tout ça et ça, ça va se passer dans la rue et on y va, c'est parti So I'm from Scotland, I'm from Edinburgh. I'm from Scotland in Edinburgh. Um, I'm from London. I moved here last March, so it's been a little bit more than a year. For me it's like a year. I moved in September last year. Uh, I'm from Sweden, Lund, so it's not really far here from Copenhagen. Uh, we're from Sweden, yeah. Lund. I'm also from Lund, Sweden. I think it's um, really interesting, a lot of basics, but layered. Um, yeah, we were just speaking about how everybody seems so put together and um, everyone has like quite a cohesive vibe to their outfits. I think it's really nice, like it's really um, fresh, it's really like put together. Nobody's coming out looking like they've just woken up. Like everyone's, they're here for a good time. <laughs> I think it's really good, it's really stylish. It's. Um, It has a lot of variations. I, I, I really like how uh, the Danish do with their style. I, it's a lot of baggy and it, it, it mixes a lot of different like uh, uh, fashion uh, items and they do it in a really fun way. I, I, I haven't like seen the same uh, sort of style or fashion in anywhere else. So I, I think it's really like special and unique. Yeah, I like it. I do think sometimes I'm like, oh, they're working with a lot of like, <laughs> like there's not much pattern sometimes. Yeah. But like, I think that makes them maybe look more uniform. Yeah. Like it all looks like more put together. And we were saying we saw people like um, wearing like trackies or like joggers, mm -hmm. but like it, it didn't look like if I wore them, it would look like I'm kind of in my pajamas still. But they look like just they made it look like an outfit, like a complete outfit. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's yeah more what you pair things with. And we were just in weekday looking at all of the basics and saying that we need to come and get that because it just makes every outfit look good. But yeah, no, I really like it. I mean, it's definitely a very street-oriented fashion scene here. Like, in the past it was very like a lot of blazers, a lot of like dresses, a very like feminine. And then like, I feel like in the past one or two years it's been shifted into like a very like more street, edgier vibes. So I feel like Uh, I don't know if you follow the fashion week, but there are like a lot of brands who are like kind of breaking the boundaries of like the very like typical Danish brands and it's actually a really nice change to see. So I'm very happy about it because as a foreigner, I feel like the Danish brands have this very like, you know, monotone kind of like, it's always kind of similar and very like feminine and Yeah, like we would say very minimalist, which is not yeah. exactly a problem, but it's very nice to see that, you know, people put more like personality in what they wear and more like, I don't know, textures, colors, more like New York a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree with that. I mean, in general, I feel like Danish, uh, Danish fashion is very monotonous, so still a lot of people like to wear like air colors and black white uh, just not to stand out but i can see on the street that more and more especially young people are trying to uh, to like be more creative and playful with what they wear i think with like um TikTok and um, like Pinterest and things, people are starting to take inspiration like um, from kind of like the Copenhagen style, London style, um, you know, getting more things from charity shops and layering um, and um, taking like little bits and bobs from things to make it, you know, things that you wouldn't think would essentially go, but then it comes together as like a cohesive outfit. Um, Yeah, I, I think so. I think people are more moving towards that. Maybe in Edinburgh, not so much um, in the smaller towns, I would say. I think in the cities, we're moving towards that kind of fashion style, but not so much in the outskirts. Mm -hmm. like, oh. I feel like our country oh don't my God. really know how, like, what's on trend. 
Like I cannot. I think they just don't have money for it. Like honestly, it's very no, but by the economical perspective, dominated. Yeah, but because also people, like clothes are the last thing that people think about. Like first they need to you know pay rent, buy food, and and the style is the last. Is, is literally the last on the list. So yeah, but like now happened like the there is the Budapest Fashion Week. Um, it happened like last weekend, and I follow the brands, and there are like really nice brands there, but it's so like behind on trends. Like it's very different. It's like a whole different kind of target audience. Like our countries has a very different average female. You know, like the mindset, the culture, the way to dress. It's like not as like um, free spirited in our countries as in here, because the equality and everything is so like high in here. You know, like girls can do whatever they want. Like I can go out without a bra in here, just on a top, and not be like not cat called. <laughs> you know, but like in our countries, you cannot really do that. So it's like very restricted. And then it's there is a huge like influencer like um, like the typical Eastern European woman is very different from the Scandinavian woman so I think that's the biggest change that is like shifting like the yeah the styles in our countries I would say because we're from Lund so we're like really um, close to the Copenhagen style I think we are really much more infl uh, influenced on uh, the fashion that we have here in Copenhagen uh, for example, in up in Stockholm, they have a really different style, and I would like to describe that like we have our own style in Lund. So it's a combination of the Stockholm style and the Copenhagen style. So I think Lund is also really inflated on the Copenhagen style. Yes, I've seen a lot of people wearing like smaller heels um, and, and like kitten, you know, heels. kitten heels and wedgies. Um, I don't think a lot of people wear like heels on the day to day back in the UK, um, which I think is actually it looks quite good. You know, you know like um, just kind of like with a more dressed down outfit with like a little kitten heel. I think it looks really nice. Um, might adapt that. I don't know how I feel about that on the bike though, but you know, that's um. <laughs> um I've really been enjoying crossbody bags. Yeah. I've like seen so many of them. And like, I only have tote bags with me, and I'm like, what am I doing? I need to get a crossbody bag. Um, so definitely them. I also really enjoy like all the Uggs, all the Birkenstocks. A lot. Yeah, like the Boston ones. Yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so, so nice. I think I like, there's a lot of sunglasses wearing, even in winter. Which I feel like in the UK they don't really do that, um, and it makes sense because like you don't just need them in summer, and it, it makes you look a bit more complete. Like adding accessories like that makes an outfit and look like better than I don't know just t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. So I think wearing sunglasses and yeah the chunky jewelry like the bigger earrings I think is quite nice as well. Yeah. I think it's the they they have a lot of Carhartt the brand and I like it a lot and then the baggy jeans. Uh, I think I like the pants. Yeah, a lot. The, pants the pants are really pants. nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And like the oversized, the oversized clothes. It's okay. Very nice. I think probably like the Adidas Sambas, and a lot of people are wearing like um, like maybe flat shoes, um, or like a sports shoe rather than um. I don't know, maybe something more chunky. I feel like that's maybe going out of fashion, going for more flat shoe. Um, or maybe like I've seen a lot of people wearing sports tops, um, sports tops and skirts, which I think um, I can probably see them coming down the rise. Yes, exactly. Like yes. Okay. <laughs> In the UK, I would definitely say the, like Adidas shoes, like the Sambas, like the sort of like bloke core, like the football t shirts. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's like the classic, and it's like jeans that are like like of a wash that are like a little bit like grimy almost yeah 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 I They'll think that's used. like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all you like vintage reclaimed all that yeah yeah um, I think that's probably the go to um, I'd say like wearing bigger shirts like a big shirt with like some jeans um, or like yeah the Adidas Sambas and like all the different colours everyone loves them in London like everyone has a pair like you go into a shop and they're completely sold out um, so they're difficult to get um, and also like lots of like the bando like off the shoulder tops I think they quite like that as well I think 
sort of like that like Scandi vibe, like Matilda really? Joe. Like yeah, it. it's it's like she is the author essentially. Yeah, I, I feel like she's like spread her gospel to like all of us. <laughs> um, so like that's like where I initially first seen the style was on her. So I think just like going beyond that and yeah. I don't know. I feel like maybe a lot of Danes are traveling a lot. I think one of the reasons might be that, that they just go to these big cities and get inspired. But on the other hand, I feel like TikTok and Instagram is very like putting them on the pedestal so like to just follow everything. And I feel like, yeah, like influencers. Like I feel like a lot of young Danish girls in particular are very internet based. So it's influencers. Instagram, TikTok. I think that's really like building there. And then the fact that they travel a lot so they can see in like New York, in London, what's like the vibe and then they just kind of like incorporate their own style. And also the fact that it's like such a high life quality here and they have money to actually afford quality pieces. So they buy like a lot of branded stuff and then they don't have to, you know, really try hard because you buy like a nice pair of pants and a nice bag and you're kind of good to go. Right, maybe that's also yeah, the reason that you, that. yeah, you have the money for quality. It's like Copenhagen is known for design, like as a whole, like furniture design, like everything. So I think like from the off, they've got like nice kind of influences with it being like simplistic and clean and functional, because that's what they do with their furniture. So I'm studying design, and that's what they do with their like furniture and their building style. So I think like from that, they like it kind of formed from that. Like very classy, like focused on, like at least now, 90s style, uh, very like oversized. What, what else? Also, I feel like practical because we bike here a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and I can see that people they just want to wear something that is comfortable on a bike, and and that makes sense because that's main public of transportation. I agree with that. I would say it's very street, um, like but is quality. It really street wear? I don't think so. Like you don't see the oh, hip hop, you know, vibe or like. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> I d I don't feel like it's streetwear for real. I don't. It's more like classy. It's like blazers. It's okay. like it's super classy. You you don't you don't pe like see people in track suits or. No, but oh, there, like is a, there is a scene that is very different from a, the mainstream girl. Like there is the mainstream Danish girl and I would say that there is like layers to the Danish fashion scene. And there is definitely the layer that's very like, you know, trying to get out from this very boring situation. And that is street, I think in my opinion. Or like very, I don't know, what is the good word for it? Yeah, uh, we're gonna stick to street and quality and um, I'm also gonna go with comfortable because I also think that's really important that it's practical and comfortable. Uh, I would say it's vintage, uh, it is unique and it is variated. It's like it can be a lot of different things. Uh, I would also like to say vintage. Uh, if it's okay, and uh, stylish, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. uh, cool. Okay. Étant donné que moi ça fait quelques jours que je suis là à Copenhague, j'ai pu déjà voir aussi un petit peu euh, le style et euh, en penser déjà pas mal de choses. Donc euh, de ce qui revient, il euh, y a beaucoup de euh, chic. Euh, neutre, euh, qualité, ça c'est vrai, même moi je l'ai euh, constaté, c'est vraiment des pièces euh, qui sont euh, très qualitatives, qui sont belles, qui sont chics, qui sont pas forcément très compliquées, ça va être beaucoup de, pas d'imprimés, mais des couleurs simples et, euh, et autres, mais ça c'est parce que aussi à Copenhague, ils ont un, un niveau de vie qui leur permet d'acheter de la qualité, euh, comme j'ai pu le voir quand j'ai acheté des pièces, euh, c'est cher, mais c'est parce qu'ils ont un très bon salaire, donc c'est pour ça, en fait, ils misent vraiment sur des pièces de qualité et tout de suite, ça fait forcément euh, chic puisque c'est de la qualité et c'est effortless, en fait. Je pense qu'il y a comme une sorte euh, 
on peut retrouver dans le Copenhagen style du Quiet Luxury. Et euh, on va dire que je pense que ces deux trains sont arrivées un peu près en même temps parce qu'elles se complètent et elles peut-être elles viennent l'une de l'autre de la même chose. Dans le style, ça va être beaucoup surtout du top très près du corps et après du pantalon euh, ou même du jean très large. On retrouve beaucoup de lin, de, 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 lin, de couleurs claires. Euh, mais il ne faut pas oublier que ça c'est comme dans euh, différents styles des pays comme par exemple en France à Paris on a le look de la parisienne chic qui est le style de stéréotype qu'on voit partout sur les réseaux sociaux et en dehors de ce style là il y a l'autre style, il y a plusieurs couches de style on va dire et Copenhague c'est ça, c'est à dire qu'on va avoir la première couche qui va être le stéréotype donc tout ce qu'on voit sur les réseaux sociaux il y a d'autres couches qui sont euh, là euh, des styles un peu plus euh, grunge peut-être, un peu plus... Euh, un plus, un peu plus Copenhague peut-être et qu'on voit pas forcément donc c'est apprendre à faire attention puisque le Copenhagen style qu'on voit partout sur les réseaux sociaux c'est euh, la première couche euh, et il faut pas oublier les autres couches du style comme par exemple la parisienne c'est la même chose pour moi en tout cas si je devais décrire en deux ou trois mots les styles Copenhague ça serait qualité chic et fortless ce serait ça pour moi euh, dans les pièces qu'on retrouve beaucoup, il y a des petits tops euh, à manches bouffantes, très ballon, des petites blouses bouffantes aussi, légères. Euh, on retrouve beaucoup de New Balance, de Birkenstock, de tongs aussi, j'ai vu des tongs, pas mal de tongs. J'ai même vu des associations avec des tongs que je ne pensais pas mais qui fonctionnent très très bien comme le costume avec des tongs. Euh, ça peut surprendre, mais moi je l'ai vu porter et c'est très très cool. Et euh, voilà, on... c'est à peu près ça dans le... C'est à peu près ça dans, dans l'ensemble, donc euh, effortless, chic et qualité et je pense que c'est pour moi c'est ce qui décrit le mieux. En tout cas j'espère que vous avez aimé la vidéo, que ça vous a plu, que vous avez pu voir un petit peu le style Copenhague, euh, qu'est-ce que ça en est. Donc j'espère que ça vous a plu et je vous souhaite une euh, très belle euh, fin de journée et je vous dis ciao